Michael Knowles, just a couple of days ago, gave a talk at Washburn University. And you know what? Props to Michael Knowles for just coming out and saying it, because we all know they've been thinking it for years. He gave a talk called Ban Transgenderism. And you know, it is just a little refreshing when these people just come right out and say what they actually want. Uh, because we all know the trans, the, the women in sports thing, they don't actually care about women's sports. They, they don't give a shit. Uh, we know they don't care about, like, uh, women in the bathroom. What they want is to get rid of trans people. That's what they want. And so we're going to hear him out. Let's see if he has some good ideas. You know, this luminary behind the large uh, anti-trans push in America. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. My name is Claudia Fury, and I'm the chairman of the Washburn College Republicans. We are very excited to be hosting. Damn, she has a cool name. And damn, she's bigoted. This event tonight and extremely thankful for Young America's Foundation for helping make this possible. I would like to say a special thank you to the Logan family for their generous support in making tonight's event possible. Tonight, we have the pleasure of hosting Michael Knowles, which has been an event that has taken months of planning, countless emails, and phone calls. One reason this event is so important to me, as well as many other students sitting in the audience tonight, is because we believe in the freedom of speech, and we will fight for the ability to voice our opinion on every college campus, and we refuse to be silenced by the administration or fellow students who disagree with us. Universities around the country present a common theme of wanting everyone to look different but think the same. They are wanting to tell you what to think and not how to think. They are willing to sacrifice the truth to save people from possibly being offended. One of the goals we hold as college Republicans is to promote open and respectful conversation on campus. I ask you all tonight to stay. Yeah, oh, we're, we're, we're in favor of open and respectful discourse, says person who spent months planning an event called Ban Transgenderism. You know, just, uh, we, we care about free speech, which is why we want to ban an entire group of people from existing in our society. Curious, and to have an open mind. With this being said, whether you agree or disagree with Mr. Knowles' viewpoints tonight, we expect everyone to remain respectful and listen to what he has to say. If there are any disruptions for members of the audience, we will gladly have Washburn Police escort you out of the auditorium. Immediately following his remarks, there will be a Q&A, so please reserve any comments or questions for that time. With all that being said, Mr. Knowles is the host of The Michael Knowles Show, author of the book Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. He graduated with a BA in History and Italian from Yale University. And in 2017, he published a book titled Reasons to Vote for Democrats, a comprehensive guide This 266-empty-page book was deemed by President Donald Trump a great book for your reading enjoyment. It was also the only book that Michael Knowles was able to write. Every person in this room is fortunate enough to live in the greatest country in the world that guarantees the freedom of speech. I'm honored tonight to be here exercising that freedom of speech with all of you. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, Mr. Michael Knowles. Thank 
you so much. Wow, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Really, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate okay, the invitation. It's wonderful to, uh, to be here. Happy Trans Visibility Day. I think we need to get that out. I, uh, I did not know that it was Trans Visibility Day when I... Damn, I love, I love how he's holding this on tra uh, National Trans Day of Visibility. And I love that his audience just laughs. I accepted this invitation to speak. I cannot say I have that particular feast day on my calendar, so that was a, uh, a happy coincidence. To assuage everyone's fears on Visibility Day, we see you. Boy, oh boy, do we see you. We always see you. It would be We always see you. We just wish we didn't. And if only there was an easy sound of gun cocking solution to this problem in our society. Anonymous, thank you for gifting a tier one sub. Possible, not to see you. It's a, a real pleasure to be at Washburn. Thank you to Yaf, as always, for hosting. Again, chat, to spite these motherfuckers, please gift subs. Uh, and by gift subs, I mean type exclamation point charity in chat to donate to the Trans Empowerment Project. Yeah, they want a bit of a more final solution, Camel Spider, exactly. American family for sponsoring this lecture series. A thank you to uh, Claudia and, and the College Republicans for, for all of their work putting this together. But most importantly, I would like to thank the Washburn president, Jerry Farley. <laughs> I would like to thank President Farley for personally signing the contract to invite me here today before he condemned me for spreading hate and misinformation. I, sort of a strange way for a university president to treat a guest that he personally invited. Uh, you sign a contract, you say, thank you, we want you to come this day, and then a couple of weeks later you libel and defame that speaker before he says anything at all uh, as some sort of menace to society. But that is exactly what President Farley did in a campus-wide email just a couple of days ago. I have the text of the email right here, so in case anyone didn't get it on this campus or elsewhere, uh, President Farley wrote, to the Washburn University community, a Washburn student organization has invited a speaker to campus who has a history of inciting fear and distrust. That's me. <laughs> Don't I strike fear into your heart? I'm, I'm, I'm terrifying. I'm a regular Conan the Barbarian. That's what I am. How can President Farley sleep at night knowing that such a behemoth as I stalks about the world? He goes on. Well, I am strongly in support of First Amendment rights. Here we go. Whenever you get that preface, you know nothing good is going to follow. It says, I am disappointed when those rights are used to make others feel unwelcome and even unsafe in our community. While we support the right to speak freely, Washburn University does not condone the hate and misinformation spread by the speaker and his supporters. You notice that President Farley never cites any examples of the hate and misinformation that he is alluding to because no such examples exist. The title of this video is Ban Transgenderism. I, I don't know how else you can interpret that other than being uh, transphobic, which is a type of bigotry. But uh, let's go in with open minds and open hearts, shall we? Maybe he's not going to be bigoted. Maybe he's, he's turned over a new leaf. Maybe the title is ironic and he's actually in favor of transgender rights. It's a, it's a lie. Instead, he just generally libels and defames me without a shred of evidence. And why does he do that? What have I said that President Farley considers to be so dangerous? Here it is. He says, Thursday happens to be International Trans Visibility Day. Actually, in President Farley's typo-laden email, he said that it's International Tans Visibility Day. Well, as a member of the Sicilian American community, I feel qualified to represent Tans Visibility Day. But I, I think he... Damn it. That was a good joke. And I'm upset that he was able to make it. He meant to say Trans Visibility Day. And so that, that's where the hate and misinformation comes from. It is because of my thesis tonight that men and women are different. For all of human history, everywhere in the world, until about five minutes ago, that observation was common sense and completely uncontroversial. N no, incorrect. And historically and anthropologically incorrect. Today, that basic fact of human nature is considered hateful. Jerry Farley, the president of this public university, taxpayer-funded university, considers the difference between men and women to be misinformation. This is something parents might want to take into consideration when they're thinking about signing that tuition check, what sort of beliefs the leadership of the university has. If the president of the university does not believe that men and women are different, one wonders what is being taught in the classroom. President Farley continues, he says, Washington, uh, Washburn University supports the trans community and students who identify as LGBTQ+. We support and stand in solidarity with trans people around the world and encourage you Based. to learn more about the issues affecting students, faculty, and staff who identify as LGBTQ+. We will continue to engage our resources to influence camp the campus community to be an inclusive place 
where all feel they are protected, affirmed, and valued. <laughs> where everyone feels affirmed and valued, I don't, I don't mean to complain. <laughs> but press I mean, yeah, you, you should feel like you are protected on the basis of who you are, yeah. If you're going around saying trans women aren't women, or like queer people are abominations, yeah, you're not going to make a whole lot of friends, but you also probably shouldn't be assaulted for saying those things. And, you know, that that's that's fine. Can we speed him up enough that he phases out of re this reality? Unfortunately not, Mint Kuro. This is merely a video projection of his image. President Farley's email does not make me feel particularly affirmed or valued. More importantly, I, I suspect that email doesn't make the students who put this event together feel affirmed or valued. I suspect the vast majority of people on this campus, virtually everyone, knows that men and women are different. I don't think that email makes them feel affirmed or valued. Pres virtually everyone? That includes trans people. Trans people don't think that they're biologically the same as cis people. That's why there's trans and cis. That's why those two words exist. President Farley is condemning every single student on this campus with a modicum of common sense by his email. And so he concludes, I encourage you to celebrate the day. I mean, like uh, Michael Knowles, should someone who goes around shouting the N-word feel comfortable and affirmed in who they are? Real question. Day, with messages of compassion and support, with your help, this university can be a shining light and example to the greater community. We will learn together and from each other and we'll be better people for it. Jerry Farley, president. I hope that we will learn together this evening. I hope we will learn or relearn basic facts about reality and human nature. If that is too much for anyone, for President Farley, I hope at least we will learn that conservatives will not be kowtowed into silence and submission to the ridiculous ideological fantasies of the radical left. That we most certainly will learn. <laughs> this lecture has been misrepresented by the very always irresponsible press as anti-trans. This speech is this speech is called Ban Transgenderism. The, the, the idea behind this is explicitly anti-trans. Not anti-trans. It in no way belittles or threatens or mocks anyone for their sexual confusion. On the, con On the contrary, it just calls for them to be eliminated from society. Contrary. This speech is a lifeline. This is a support for people who have fallen into a false and destructive ideology called transgenderism. Like, if I was going around the country giving a talk about, uh, like, that was just banned Sicilians, I, I feel like Michael Knowles would say, well, that is clearly anti-Sicilian bigotry. It's not really that hard to understand where, why one would perceive this as bigoted. In recent years, the number of people who identify as transgender has exploded. As Based. LGBT generally has exploded. Historically, about 1-2% to of people have identified as LGBT. Ten years ago, that number jumped. 3.5% uh, of Americans at that time. Historically, based on what data, Michael Knowles? Might it be that uh, any type of data collection that might be uh, considered reliable would have been impossible? Under times and conditions during which... Uh, being openly trans or gay or lesbian or bi or just gender non-conforming would have been considered literal crimes. Might that have made it a bit difficult to collect accurate data on the percentage of the population that identify in those ways? Isn't it interesting also that your data is largely dependent on the uh, data collection of Western countries, which exported this idea of a male of a man woman uh, binary to other cultures that disagreed. And if they disagreed, that disagreement was stamped out at the end of a gun in residential schools, for example, or other forms education systems uh, around the world, like such as in India. Hmm, curious. I'm identified as LGBT, according to Gallup polling. Last year, that number rose to 5.6%. That's a 60% increase in just nine years. That increase has been driven almost entirely by Gen Z, the Zoomers, 20.8% of whom, more than one in five of whom, now identify as LGBT. Base. That is a statistical impossibility. 
Either Alex Jones is right, and they are putting something in the water <laughs> that is turning the frickin' Zoomers gay, or, or, I think more likely, we're looking at a phenomenon that is rooted not in biology, but in a kind of social mania. Whatever is in the water, I think the surge has to do more with society. I spoke a few weeks ago with a woman by the name of Helena Kirschner. Helena is a 23-year-old woman who began to identify as a man and transition, quote-unquote, to be a man, just a few days after her 18th birthday. Transitioning, for those who don't know, is a word that transgender ideologues have given to a medical malpractice in which people who are suffering from sexual confusion take cross-sex hormones and sometimes... Wait, on what basis are you coming to these conclusions? Because the ideas you just espoused, Michael Knowles, fly in the face of every major reputable medical and psychological association. The idea, the idea that this is medical confusion um, is uh, very interesting, considering medical confusion is not the scientific consensus on this issue. What the fuck is this confusion he's on about? Uh, he's basically talking about if you are gay, if you are trans, you're just medically confused. Uh, literally, he is applying the... Uh, the standards of like the 1950s uh during which gay men were considered to have mental illness it was literally considered to be a mental illness to be gay of any kind uh up until like the 1970s or 80s um so he's just appealing to to yesteryear's ideas uh that have been rapidly and thoroughly debunked by modern science even mutilate their healthy organs to appear cosmetically more like the opposite sex. Helena had suffered from body image issues since she was a teenager. Like every teenager, especially like most teenage girls. No, every teenager does not suffer from the same amount of dysphoria as trans individuals. Uh, usually, people grow out of this and become more comfortable in their skin. But, but now, radicals are affirming their delusions and luring people into a very pernicious ideology. Helena began to isolate herself online. She didn't have a lot of friends. She would isolate herself on social media, on Tumblr in particular. And there, her new virtual friends encouraged her to be a man. Uh, Helena was vulnerable. She was confused. She was a teenage girl. And she thought that by injecting herself with testosterone, she might be able to solve her problems. A few days after her 18th birthday, Helena walked into a Planned Parenthood clinic, of course. Uh, Planned Parenthood had hard-earned... Oh, oh, no. An adult made a medical decision on their own behalf. The horror the reputation as the least regulated place for teenagers to get cross-sex hormones. So she walked in, the predators at Planned Parenthood gave her a 20-minute questionnaire. They then- They're doctors and medical staff. And immediately gave her the highest allowable dosage of testosterone. They downplayed all the side effects and they sent her on her not-so-merry way, syringe in hand. Uh, quickly, Helena began to suffer terrible mood swings. She had a massive increase in her sex drive. She had rage attacks that were so intense that she began to harm herself. She was institutionalized twice. She saw a slew of psychiatrists. And none, not one of these mental health professionals ever suggested that perhaps this major change that she had undergone might have something to do with the fact that she, a young girl, was injecting herself with male hormones. They never brought it up. They just prescribed her new psych drugs to take on top of the testosterone. By luck or by providence, Helena's fits of rage became so intense that she would sometimes- You know, it is pretty interesting that they never mention that, uh, you know, when you're on hormones, you go and see an endocrinologist, like experts in- the functioning of the endocrine system like even if you're just going to a planned parenthood even if you do an informed consent like the people who are in charge of your medical care in those circumstances are experts in endocrinology they have medical degrees times neglect to take the testosterone then and only then wouldn't you know it her symptoms began to abate she realized that the reality of a woman injecting herself with male hormones was not matching up to the fantasy that she had had of being a man. The fantasy could never match up to that reality. Ah, good, good. Now it is a uh, sexual disorder where they're getting off on the idea of transitioning. Because no matter how many drugs Helena took, no matter how many surgeries she could have undergone, she could never be a man because she is a woman and women cannot be men. Helena learned the hard way that fantasy is not the same as reality. Fortunately, she chose reality. Fortunately, also- This entire thing is citation needed. But I'm really interested to see how he how he proceeds from this anecdotal story. For her, she does not appear to have all that many permanent effects from this process of transitioning. The same cannot be said of everyone who falls down the transgender rabbit hole, many of whom are left permanently injured and filled with regret when their delusions fail to alter reality. 
citation needed because the rate of like trans regret is massively overstated by uh conservatives the actual rate of trans regret is less than like one percent of transgender people like again with any medical treatment there is going to be a chance that it does not succeed okay uh for example uh it is possible for you to die from any kind of uh operation it's possible for you to die at the dentist when they put in uh localized anesthetic you might have an allergic reaction okay but this is this is important uh the overwhelming evidence would suggest that if a treatment is 99 0.5% effective that a doctor would still recommend that surgery or that treatment option because it's 99.5% effective and there's only a 0.5% chance it would go wrong. Doctors suggest surgeries that have far greater likelihoods of not, go of not going well for cancer patients and the like, you know? Um, so the idea that doctors just shouldn't like offer medically sound advice because there's a chance something could go wrong is very stupid yeah i could have died when having my gallbladder removed but i'm still here exactly avalon of babylon i could have died when i had my gallbladder removed but i'm still here there is a much higher likelihood of me dying from getting my gallbladder removed than from me experiencing regret because i uh, went through the medical process of getting a hormone replacement therapy as an adult. <clears throat> yeah, most life-saving surgeries have a 60% or lower chance of success. Not every person who identifies uh. as transgender will experience immediate regret. Some people that I've spoken to, some transitioners, describe a period of pleasure, even euphoria. It, it's called... A 99 point something plus rate of success. When they begin their transition <sighs> process. Some people will come to regret the procedures only later, after the initial thrill wears off, and that will leave them as bad off as they were to begin with, if not worse off. Some people may never experience conscious regret. Statistically speaking, they are very unlikely to be better off than they were before the hormones and before the mutilations. Citation needed. Because statistically... Almost all trans people who go through with medical transition do like the changes that happened and would not give it up for anything. There is a small minority of people who detransition or feel some amount of regret. This is not an overwhelming number by any means, and co-opting their situation in order to advocate against all trans people is pretty fucking disgusting. Statistically, the rates of anxiety and depression and suicide among post-transitioners are basically the same as pre-transitioners. But these people may never come to any sort of conscious regret. That's true. The problem with transgenderism, the real, the central problem, is not regret, but Good reality. Night, Mist. Transgenderism is simply not true. It is a false account of human nature, which holds that one's true self has nothing to Cy citation needed do with physical reality. According to transgenderism, one can talk like a man, have an Adam's apple like a man, walk like a man, have all of the male appendages, all of the male chromosomes, and yet somehow still be a woman. Yeah, that is correct. Transgender activists usually will not explain how this is possible. It, it's quite possible because no one is fucking looking at your chromosomes to gender you. <clears throat> no one is looking at your penis in order to gender you. Uh, they make assumptions based on your presentation, based on different gendered cues in your uh, mannerisms, etc. They aren't looking at your biology when someone genders you. It's pretty straightforward and simple. There is no explanation because it's incoherent. One explanation that they sometimes... It's also not incoherent. Uh, again, history has many examples of societies that have existed with uh, more than two genders. Some with three, some with five, some with upwards of twelve. This before is that sex is not gender. They'll say sex That's and gender true. are different. Yep. Now it's, it's worth pointing out that this explanation is not actually an explanation. It's just a statement. It's just a claim uh, without any evidence whatsoever. 
which is pretty interesting, Michael, considering everything you've made here are statements and claims that you have not backed up whatsoever. And then when the activists try to defend this claim, the idea becomes even less coherent. Sometimes these activists will differentiate sex and gender by saying that sex is physical and gender is socially constructed. Sex, you see, is your body and gender is how you think about your body. Okay, this distinction leads to an obvious problem. If sex is physical and gender is just a state of mind, well then if there's a conflict between your sex and your gender, just change your mind. If, if gender is socially constructed, you can't just change your mind. That's part of the issue, right? Your mind is your mind. And whatever it is on the inside, it is not as simple as just changing your mind. Otherwise, we would have overwhelmingly uh, positive results from things like conversion therapy. Instead, we have uh, overwhelmingly negative results, uh, meaning that conversion therapy does not effectively change people's minds. Uh, which indicates it's actually easier to change your, your, your physical uh, attributes than it is to change your mind on this particular issue. Then gender can be socially reconstructed, can't it? Surely it would be easier to- uh, purple, di purple Dragon Crew, I have sped up the video. Reconstruct this social construct <laughs> than it would be to reconstruct your body, which can never be successful. Certainly that would be less expensive. What? Wait, how, how is it unsuccessful to reconstruct your body? Right, like, people reconstruct their bodies all the time. People get, like, knee surgeries, they get heart surgery, uh, people get organs replaced. Like, yeah, we can, we, can, we can change our bodies, Michael Knowles. That's, like, the entire basis of medical science. It would be less painful. At this point, activists will usually take back their claim that gender is not physical. They will say that gender is not merely a state of mind, but actually a biological fact. They will make dubious claims about brain scans. They will say that in the mind... No, you don't have to make an appeal to brain scans. You just have to make an appeal to uh, the effectiveness of treatments. ...minds of transgender people who look like men and they've got all the markings of men, their brains actually more closely resemble women. They will claim that gender identity, like biological sex, is rooted in the body, in the brain, in the hormones, etc. But at this point, the sex-gender distinction completely falls apart. Now we are told both are physical. This is how we end up with such phrases. Please pardon my use of this phrase. So he, he's just objectively wrong here. As the uh, biologically female penis. Have you heard that phrase? That's a phrase that is going around in academia. No, I've, I've never heard biologically female penis. I'm, I'd be curious to know more about the context, but... Uh, I have never heard that term before, and I am a trans person, and I'm heavily involved in academia. Yeah, there's girl dick. Girl dick is a thing. Wait, is that what he's- is that what he's referring to? Wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god. Is he just referring to the way that, like, trans women refer to their own genitals? Circles. It's a term coined by an actor, India Moore, who is a man who thinks that he's a woman. And this, of course, results in a contradiction. A person cannot simultaneously... Yeah, I wonder why anyone would think that uh, Michael Knowles is bigoted, uh, calling India Moore a man who thinks uh, he's a woman. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So he's... Wait. Clarice, thank you for the $100 dono. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful human. <clears throat> but like, so it's really interesting here, right? He just he just went on to say like uh, that the term uh, biologically female penis is an academic term that's been swirling around in academic circles before like quickly mentioning that actually the term was coined by a trans actress named India Moore. So like it's not a it's not an academic term. It is a collo uh, colloquial term coined by a non-academic. Again, this would be like him complaining that like a lot most trans girls refer to their dicks as girl dicks. I hear Clarice is going to come on stream and bully me, shake my head. Not today, maybe on Tuesday. Genuinely be a man and a woman. Because to be a man means not to be a woman. 
To be a woman means not to be a man. N no. Ac actually. Uh, gender binary is a relatively new construction. Even in the vanishingly rare cases of anatomical or chromosomal ambiguity, hermaphroditism, intersexuality, whatever you want to call it. Which occurs at roughly the same amount, uh, at the same rate as uh, redheads existing in society. So, uh, get fucked, all of you redheads. Get, get fucked, half the Swedish population. Get fucked, Ireland. A person's biology, even then, is not entirely ambiguous, <laughs> even in that exceedingly rare case. A person may still be classified as a man or a woman. In the case of transgenderism, there isn't any ambiguity at all. In the case of transgenderism, all of the biological how How is it not? Markers point to one sex, and then the person mistakenly believes that he is the opposite sex. How do you know what someone else's biological markers are, Michael? See, this is, this is the issue. Like, I, I mean, look, I, I guess I would not put it past Michael Knowles to be, like, going around fondling people's genitals. He does seem like that type. I've seen his acting reel, okay? Uh, I Look, I don't want to be too mean, but I, I, that guy had to fondle a few balls to get into uh, his few actual acting gigs, okay? Um, yeah, most people don't know what their own chromosomes are. Redheadism is gaining too much traction. True, Moogsy. We must be stopped. The only way even to possibly resolve this conflict would be to say that sex refers to your body and gender refers to your soul. To say that sex- What? No. My, my god, for someone who claims to know the academic terminology, you are really bad at this shit. Sex is the physical part of our being, and gender is the metaphysical part of our being. Most transgender activists will refuse to talk about it in these terms because, in, in my experience, most transgender activists deny the existence of the soul. Sounds a little old-timey. Sounds a little bit too Christian for all of these enlightened liberal thinkers. But this soul-body distinction is the nearest thing to a coherent argument that the transgender activists can muster. What? <laughs> what? Y you know, Michael Knowles, there are like other religions, you know? It doesn't have to be Christianity. Like, other, other religions have a concept of like a spiritual. I... I mean, in, in the case of two spirits, we're literally talking about the spiritual, you know? Like, if he's going to talk about souls, then he has to acknowledge that there are other cultures that have had other understandings of the soul. Sure, my body might be male, but my soul, and therefore my true self, is female. Now, we might be getting somewhere, but we are leaving are the realm we? of biology. We are leaving the realm of the natural sciences. We are now entering into the realm of theology. Damn, if only, if only there was a term for how theology becomes constructed uh, it, within groups of people, you know, like the idea of some kind of social construction uh, that goes into uh, most theologies and therefore, in Michael Lowell's understanding of this issue, genders. Hmm. If only there was some... Social constructive theory of gender. Transgender activists refuse to do this because they don't take theology very seriously. They think that theology is just a bunch of make-believe. They think that it's a bunch of unfalsifiable fantasies, totally divorced from the intellectual rigor of science with a capital S. So, uh, Michael Knowles, does that mean you take, uh, you take uh, Buddhism as seriously as you take Christianity? Or uh, are you just using the word theology here to only mean Christianity. Uh, chat, reminder that you can type exclamation point charity into chat at any time to donate to the Trans Empowerment Project and spite my people like Michael Knowles, who are transphobic bigots. It is ironic, of course, that people who believe that men can become women would accuse anybody else of magical thinking, but there it is. All transgender wear diapers? That isn't even, like, True? Why would transgender people wear diapers? Statistically, more cisgender people wear diapers. They do so because they don't understand theology, which is faith seeking understanding. Theology actually is the opposite of make-believe and fantasizing. Just as natural science is the rigorous contemplation of the physical world, so too theology is the rigorous and logical contemplation of faith and the metaphysical world. Transgenderism, I want to make the strongest case I I, I would love for Michael Knowles to now talk about how theology 
is just as rigorous between Buddhism or like uh, various uh, uh, mythological pantheons and Christianity. Please go. Please go. 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 I want. I want Michael Knowles to now go off on a weird tangent about uh, world religions. I, I want that more than anything. Yeah, let, let's hear Michael Knowles talk about Zoroastrianism. I possibly can for transgenderism. Transgenderism in its most coherent form, not saying much, but this is the most coherent form you can get, is a fundamentally religious movement that makes three claims about the relationship of the body to the soul. Man, he went off the deep end. Now he, okay, now he's claiming that transgenderism is a religion. Okay. Incorrect, but I'm very interested to see where this is going. One, that the body and the soul are entirely separate and therefore can be in conflict with one another. Two, that our true identity, our authentic self, is our soul. It has nothing to do with our bodies. It has everything to do with our souls. And three, when our bodies and our souls are in conflict, we must reject our bodies and we must entirely embrace our souls. Even it, this is really... I mean, th obviously this is nonsense, but Michael Knowles is revealing a lot about how his brain works, and I find that very fascinating. Um, Even to the point of mutilating our bodies to better accord with our soul. Those are the three best points I can give you for transgenderism. They're not new. This, it seems like a new idea, but it's actually not a new idea. Understood in this way, transgenderism is nothing more than an ancient heresy known as Gnostic dualism. Gnost Wait. Michael Knowles, I thought you were interested in theology. Gnosti Gnosticism isn't heresy. From a theological point of view, it's just a different belief system. So, are you interested in theology and uh, logical uh, talking about religions, or are you just interested in pushing a very specific religion, Michael, because there's a big difference between theology, the study of religions, and simply saying everyone should be Christian. These are two different things. Gnostic dualism has held that the physical world is an evil facade that must be rejected for the pure and secret world beyond matter. This heresy has gone by lots of names over the centuries, Gnosticism, Manichaeism in the 3rd century, Albigensianism in the 12th century. It keeps cropping up. There are different variations, but it's always the same tune. Like transgenderism, all of these heresies were not primarily popular with the common people. All of these heresies... Yo, my ass is dragon. Thank you for the $25 dono. Chat, we are now only uh, $324 away from our next goal. Let's keep going were of course popular with the intellectuals. Only an intellectual could be so stupid as to believe these heresies. I was reminded- Why- why wouldn't only an intellectual be interested in her heresy? Wouldn't an intellectual be interested in theology, Michael? I thought you were presenting yourself as an intellectual who was interested in theology and the logical investigation of the soul. I thought, uh, I thought that's what you were saying, but uh, now it seems as if being interested in theology is actually too intellectual for Michael Knowles. The other day, when Judge Katanji Jackson was uh, in her confirmation hearings for the Supreme Court, she was asked a question by Marsha Blackburn on this topic. Senator Blackburn said, well, what is a woman? Can you define what a woman is? And Katanji Jackson, Judge Jackson, a federal judge, laughed. She said, of course I can't. I I'm not a biologist. I can't tell you what a woman is. <laughs> Ketanji Jackson has two degrees from Harvard. Only someone with two degrees from Harvard could be so stupid as to not know what a woman is. I mean, here, here's the thing that I, I don't know if, I, I guess conservatives don't really understand. Um, judges have to rule on individual cases, and sometimes individual cases or the law is somewhat ambiguous about what a woman or a man are, you know? <clears throat> this is something, by the way, that comes up over and over again in different countries when investigating uh, what the rights of transgender people should be. <clears throat> you find out that there are judges all across the world who struggle 
intensely with the idea of what being a man or being a woman actually means. In Malaysia, for example, it's considered uh, essentially illegal to be transgender in public. However, because of different vagarities in the law, there are occasionally some judges who will interpret the meaning of the law in certain cases to, uh, that, in such a way that it actually allows a transgender person in Malaysia to legally change their gender, despite the fact that it is illegal. And that's because judges have to rule on individual cases. Not on they, their job is not providing a dictionary definition to every single thing that crosses their desk because their job is interpreting the law. And the law is not telling you what a man and a woman is. Now, different countries can have those ideas. <clears throat> For example, uh, Hungary, uh, under Viktor Orban, uh, undid its recognition of transgender people in like 2015 and uh, since then has just denied every transgender person uh, the right to change their identifications and put most of them at risk and a lot of them have fled the country. Um, how many degrees does Michael Knowles have? He has one. He has a bachelor's from Yale in history and in Italian history. Um, yeah. Yeah, can, Ms. Jackson, can you answer this question that is clearly political and not about your job, and also is unclear even in our own legal system? Like, that, that's the thing, right? Like, the, the law of the United States does not have a thing defining what a man is, or defining what a woman is. You know, there's not like a... It, it's, there's not like a subsection of the law where it's like, well, a man is anyone with XX or XY chromosomes and a woman only has XX because then that would put every person with some kind of variation in like a legal gray area. And it's just not that useful. Up until like 20 or 30 years ago, people didn't even know cr what chromosomes were. Okay, like the idea that the law has historically represented men as only XY chromosome and women as XX is incorrect. It's just incorrect. Even, even the idea that the law represented vagina havers from penis havers is incorrect. So that's what's so interesting about this. It's presenting a question as if it's a common sense question that everyone throughout the entire history of American jurisprudence would have an answer to. But that answer has historically not been the same over time. The idea of what a man is, biologically and socially, has changed from the beginning of America to today. The idea of what a woman was, biologically and socially, has changed from back at the founding of America to today. Like transgenderism, all of these heresies preached salvation through the attainment of secret knowledge. In our secular age, we would probably prefer the word liberation to salvation. It substantially, it means the same thing. The only way that we can free ourselves from the prison of the body, according to this view, man trapped inside a woman's body, all that sort of language, is through the secret knowledge hidden by the evil physical world. But this Gnostic account of the soul is simply not true. That's not the way the soul and the body works. The soul is not, in fact, separate, entirely distinct from the body. The body is not, in fact, a prison for the soul. The so okay, so you're not making an argument to theology. The soul is the form of the body. The soul is the animating principle of life. This is not a typical way that we talk about transgenderism because we've completely thrown theology out the window, but transgenderism... Wait, so we've thrown, we've thrown theology completely out the window... But you're saying that the study of transgenderism is part of the study of theology. You, you, you said it's a religion, so obviously theology would apply here? can only even possibly be sort of understood as a theological movement, <clears throat> hence our, our necessity to apply the rigors of theology to this movement, and it crumbles when you do that. H how? You just made a bunch of claims about how the soul works? 
which is not a theo uh, like a theological concept. I mean, like the the soul itself is a theological concept. Don't get me wrong, but theology would instead say you need to examine the movement more and come to like definite conclusions about what they believe, not argue against it. Like theology doesn't exist as like a method for you to do like apologism for Christianity. That's not what theology exists for. Ironic that transgender activists celebrate a day called the Trans Day of Visibility, when the entire premise of transgenderism is that we must reject the visible world for the secret invisible world. Everything that is visible, that's evil, that's a lie, our bodies are a lie, only the invisible is what we must celebrate. Now, the purpose of that lengthy biological and theological digression is to make crystal clear my central point in tonight's lecture, that transgenderism is completely wrong, completely wrong from the standpoint of biology, from the standpoint of psychology, from the standpoint of theology and everywhere in between. It is entirely incoherent. It doesn't make any sense at all. The toleration of transgender ideology benefits no one and harms everyone who has the misfortune of encountering it. Our society should reject transgenderism entirely, which we have, by the way, we have. For most of American history, we did reject this entirely. Despite the misguided efforts of some transgender activists, Transgenderism remains classified as a mental illness in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for well over a century. No, no it, it, it doesn't, actually. Century ...until left-wing courts got a little, little activist. Cross-dressing was illegal throughout much of the United States, including in San Francisco. My, how times have changed. <laughs> I think today it is illegal not to cross-dress in San Francisco. It used to be the opposite. Okay, so he, he's arguing that it should be illegal for trans people to exist. Gotcha. If a man thought that he was a woman, for most of our nation's history, he would receive counseling, just as he does today. Not just as he does today, because in those olden days, until about five minutes ago, the counseling would involve presenting the man with reality and trying to bring his delusions into better accord with reality. It would consist in convincing him that he is in fact a man. Today, counseling, which is called gender-affirming counseling, how ironic that you're convincing someone they are the opposite sex, you call that affirming. Today, it is all about affirming delusion, which helps no one and only makes the problem worse. Conservatives have been too soft on this. The idea that, like... <sighs> Here's the issue, right? Michael Knowles, to Michael Knowles, transgender people existing is the problem. To him, that is what the problem is. So the problem getting worse is merely transgender people continuing to exist. The goal of counseling shifted towards acceptance of trans people because counselors and psychological professionals and medical professionals have found via their experience, via their research, that affirming transgender people results in better outcomes for transgender people. The idea is that we have quantitative evidence that when you treat trans people as the gender they identify as, you get better outcomes for them rather than trying to force them to be the gender that they do not identify with. If we got better outcomes from that, from that imposition on them, that is what doctors and uh, mental health professionals would recommend. But conservatives and people like Michael Knowles, to them, the problem isn't whether or not a trans person is happy and functional. To them, the infraction is that trans people exist and that they have to treat other people who aren't like them with respect. Because we want to be nice. Because we want to be open-minded. Generally speaking, we do not want to impose our desires on other people. We don't really care that much. We want to live. You, you literally, you literally just talked about how, up until five minutes ago in American society, the ideal solution was to uh, force people to be a gender they didn't believe they were. <clears throat> Which, by the way, sounds an awful lot like torture to me. But, uh, you know, uh, you. You know, kind of like that episode where, like, Picard is abducted by, uh, that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where Picard is abducted by, uh, I think it's, like, uh, one of the, one of the Cardassians. And, uh, he's tortured for weeks at a time, 
and his torturer is just telling them, all you gotta do to end this torture is to say you see four lights. And... Or there are four lights. And, or you have to say there are three lights. Yeah, it's a Cardassian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to say there are three lights, but there are actually four. And, like, this isn't something that he believes, but he's going to be tortured until he breaks and believes it. And to people like Michael Knowles, that is what trans people should undergo. You should be tortured until your mind breaks. Because that would just be more convenient for these people. Um, Jellyfish, thank you for the 200 bitties. I appreciate that. Live and let live. I just want to have a good life and not have these wackos try to trans my kids in kindergarten. That's what we want. And so we try to find a middle ground. To varying degrees, conservatives have tolerated transgender ideology. Often you will hear conservatives use phrases such as... Really, really have conservatives tolerated transgender ideology? What has the, uh, what has the conservative uh, toleration of trans ideology looked like? Because in this entire speech, you've not been tolerating trans people. Biological male. You've probably heard that phrase. Uh, this would refer to men who think that they're women, but they're really men. In part, by the way, the, the reason conservatives use this phrase is because the oligarchs who control our media and our big tech platforms threaten to completely silence us and throw us out of the public square and shut down every conservative outlet if we don't in some way bend the knee to transgenderism. So I do understand from a tactical perspective why some conservatives in media and in politics use that phrase. Yeah, the, 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 the conservative oligarchs are just so uh, hell-bent on indoctrinating your kids to be trans? Are you fucking insane? Phrase. But biological male is ultimately a losing strategy. It does not oppose transgenderism. It does exactly the opposite. When you use the phrase biological male, you are implying that you can be some other kind of male. You can be a biological male, but a spiritual female. You are, you are implying that there is a distinction. You are accepting the entire premise of transgenderism. You're conceding the whole point. Conservatives will say things like, listen, transgenderism, it's fine for adults. If a man wants to put on a dress and call himself Sally, well, doggone it, that's his right. That's none of my business. He has a right to do that. But he shouldn't impose it on kids. That's where we draw the line. Or conservatives will say, if a man wants to live his life as a woman, that's completely fine. But he shouldn't be allowed to compete against girls in sports. That would be unfair. Yes, of course that's unfair. Everyone. Did you see this photo a couple of weeks ago of that hulking male swimmer wearing the Borat suit, wearing a woman's jumpsuit as a man, standing next to women and beating them and taking away their trophies and taking away their glory, dwarfing the actual women on the NCAA podium? Of course that's unfair. But I hate, I hate to say this. I don't want to sound insensitive. Who cares? I don't, I don't, very few people care about women's sports. Yes, we support our sisters. Yes, we support our daughters. Nobody. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at, look at this, this hulking, hulking woman. This hulking trans woman. Except this is a cisgender woman. This is, this, this is just the body type for women swimmers. These gosh, these gosh darn transgenders. Look at, look at their bulging muscles. Look at how, look at how freakish they are. With their freakishly fast swim times. Except this is a, this is a cisgender woman. This is just what women who compete in sports look like. Oh God. The transgenders, they're coming for us. They're, they're taking over women's sports. This is, this is another cisgender swimmer, though. This is, this is what women who compete in swimming look like. Oh, oh, God. Look at all them transgenders on stage. This is, sorry, this is just what, like, women's swimmers look like. WNBA, it's not an actual concern. <laughs> Nobody cares. We, we only pretend to care now because it's the most socially acceptable way to criticize transgenderism. So now He's right, though. He's right. He said the quiet part out loud. We only... We not, none of us give a shit about women's sports. We just give it, we pretend to give a shit because it's the only socially acceptable way for us to be bigoted against trans people. He just said it. 
uh, but why, why is the university treating me like a bigot? Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have conservatives buying WNBA subscriptions. It's ridiculous. The, the problem with transgenderism is not that it complicates college swim meets. The problem is that it is a false account of human nature that encourages delusion and psychosis and self-mutilation. That's our... Cy citations needed. Uh, Michael Knowles, I'm going to need an objective scientific uh, definition of human nature, please. Uh, let's go. Issue, folks. We just don't want to say it. <laughs> In one of the stupidest Supreme Court decisions in the history of our country, the, uh, the sometime romantic poet, Justice Anthony Kennedy, uh, asserted that at the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence, of meaning, of the universe, and of the mystery of human life. Wow, man. <laughs> I don't know where in the Constitution Justice Kennedy found that. Uh, unclear. J Justice Scalia mocked. It's called Pursuit of Happiness. It's in the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence. That is the sweetness of life passage in <laughs> our jurisprudence, regardless of where Kennedy- Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That last one is kind of uh, fundamental to uh, your idea of self. He found it. The, the bottom of what Bong can be found in. <laughs> regardless of that, it's, it's just not true. No one has the right, or the ability for that matter, to define existence, their own reality. On the contrary. On the contrary. We have a responsibility to accept reality. No one has the right, even, to engage in whatever sort of private behaviors tickle their fancy. You're not allowed to do certain drugs. Maybe you want to, but you're not. We have rules against that. You're not allowed to sell your organs. I think that's a pretty good rule. It inhibits your individualism, I guess, but I think it's a good law. You're not allowed, or at least you were not allowed until very recently, to have doctors chop off your perfectly healthy organs. You do not have any natural or constitutional right to delusional and destructive behavior. Either the transgender vision that men can seek... Wait. Actually, yeah, you can have an appendectomy without, like, an imminent need for one. You can have your tonsils out without, like, an imminent medical need for that. Currently <clears throat> be women, or vice versa, is correct, or it isn't. Obviously, it isn't. So why are we restructuring... Citation needed. ...our law and our politics and our culture according to a premise that every sensible person on planet Earth knows is false. We cannot split the baby. The supposed right of confused people to pretend to be the opposite sex necessarily infringes on the rest of our rights to distinguish between men and women. Because we live- Wait, why do you have a right to distinguish between men and women? Wait, why does your- why does your right to be able to distinguish between men and women as you personally define it? outweigh another person's right to live the way they want to. Live in a society. This is why we have fights over <laughs> bathroom bills and pronoun rules and the 2022 NCAA championship and on and on and on. The only way to stop this transgender madness is to oppose it entirely. There is no natural or constitutional or, or civil right to fantasy. And there is nothing compassionate about encouraging disturbed people to indulge their destructive delusions. Yes, it's unfair that transgender ideology permitted William Leah Thomas to take the trophy away from the young woman at the swim meet. But it's unfair because it's unjust. From the young woman whose name we don't know. Just, and it's unjust because it's based on lies. Yo, Rosalind Faye, thank you for the 100 As we all do, as even I think most of the radical leftists do when they're being really honest with themselves, if you recognize that there is something wrong with the picture of a giant man standing, taking a woman's trophy away while he stands there in a woman's swimsuit, if you realize that there's something maybe wrong, with that same giant man getting undressed in the women's locker room when they're asking him not to, if you realize that transgender ideology doesn't make any sense by any standard or vantage whatsoever, then stop pussyfooting around the issue. The only way. Be a bigot. Like, I, I, do, I do have to say, I do appreciate... I do appreciate him coming forward and just being like, come on, folks, be bigoted like me. I do appreciate the honesty. Uh, Zyla, thank you very much for the sub. To stop this madness is to stop tolerating the transgender ideology entirely. In all times, in all places, for all people, for the good of everyone, full stop. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so again, amazing how he spent the first like 15 minutes complaining about how people called him a bigot and a fear monger. Uh, but then he just ends his speech by saying, we, it, not only do we need to just be openly bigoted to transgender people, we need to make it illegal to be trans. Like, his actual position is that it was better 
in the good old days when the police could arrest trans people. Yeah, which, by the way, is a fascist position. Explicitly so. This is what Nazi Germany did. We're going to go through this Q&A now. Felicity! Good night. Good night. Now, I believe, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the Q&A session. We ask that you, if you have a question, you carefully and quickly make your way over to our associates and they will line you up. We ask that you remain respectful and allow Mr. Knowles to answer your question. Uh, you are allowed one question and one question only. And we also ask that you have your question ready when you come up to the front of the line. Thank you. We, we have a rule at the Daily Wire, which I vehemently disagree with. But we have this rule anyway that if you disagree with me, you can come to the front of the line. I think that if you disagree with me, you should be cast into outer darkness where there's wailing <laughs> and gnashing of teeth. But look, rules are rules. So if you disagree with me, feel free to skip the line. Hi, Mr. Knowles. My name is Andrew Brown, and I'm a student here at the law school. Uh, my question for you is, uh, you spoke earlier about theology and standing firm on truth in regards to transgenderism. How can conservatives who are also people of faith speak truth into people's lives while also loving them in a way that Christ has shown us? Well, I, I think the way to love people is to speak the truth in love, right? And both parts of that are very important. What, what the left has said, especially on this issue of transgenderism, is that the truth is cruel. The truth that the man who thinks he's a woman is a man, that's cruel and that, that's awful, and the only way to set him free is to lie. Now, you might remember that a certain fellow about 2,000 years ago had something to say about this issue and said, no, it's not, that, <laughs> it's not that the truth is cruel and lies will set you free. It's that the truth will set you free and that we have to throw lies away all the time, have no, no quarter for that. So I, I fear that right now, a, a misbegotten compassion, a misguided compassion has conservatives really disrespecting people. When you, when you respect someone, you tell them the truth. When, when you respect someone, you say, listen, buddy, put away the dress. It's, you're, not, you're not a woman, and people are mocking you behind your back. And maybe, maybe I'm not mocking you, but other people are, and you look ridiculous. And it's for your own good that I'm telling you this. And that can be tough, but sometimes love is tough. There's a great tapestry, a bio-tapestry, uh, one of the more famous pieces of Western art. And on it, there is an image of a man holding a club, smacking people with a club. And it says in Latin, here Bishop Odo holding a club comforts the boys. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. Doesn't seem very comforting, does it? These are his own men, by the way. Uh, bishop Odo couldn't carry a sword into battle. He's a bishop, there were standards. And so he carried a club, and when his cowardly men tried to retreat, he would smack him with the club and say, get back into battle. But that's the real meaning of comfort, isn't it? To give strength to somebody. And so that's what we ought to do. And uh, the, the weak and destructive voices who tell us that uh, the truth is evil, that the truth is harmful, well, those voices have always been around, and they're not on the right side of things. Hi, Michael. My name is Caleb. Uh, I just was wondering if you would co-write a sequel mm. to your best book with me so I can get some royalty money. Mm. More, <laughs> more reasons to vote for Democrats. Mm. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I, I already have a, in the works the 25th anniversary edition. <laughs> it will be revised and expanded. I guess not really revised. I think it'll be pretty much all the same thesis. Uh, but there are lots of books that we can work on together. You can do a, a Caro-esque biography of the Hillary Clinton presidency. That would be a good one. Uh, you could uh, you know, write about the, um, the devout Catholicism of Joe Biden. That could be an interesting one. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of options. Have, have your people call my people and we'll set it up. I'm Quinn Hughes. I'm a law student in Washburn. Um, you referred to studies of brain scans and individuals experience, experiencing gender dysphoria as dubious. Could you elaborate on what specifically makes these studies unreliable? Uh, sure. I don't have the studies in front of me. I think all statistics are crap. I'm happy to cite them when they back up my point, but I don't have a great deal of respect for them. Uh, the, the ah, okay. Yeah, statistics don't only matter when they serve my position. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Joanna R.W., thank you for the 100 biddies, by the way. This is a new phenomenon. <laughs> uh, they are not particularly well established. They are, I, I know as much to know that there is a great deal of debate in the cognitive science community about the realities of it. But actually, the, re the reality of the brain stance is sort of second to my point, because my point is merely to uh, discern exactly which sort of argument the transgender activists are making. And the very fact that the goalposts constantly are shifting, I think, speaks to the validity of my thesis. The, the, at the center of transgenderism is this issue of the sex gender distinction. Uh, so if the sex is. Yeah, da data's crap. Now, let me tell you about my soul science physical and the gender is metaphysical, then we can prove that with theology. If the sex is physical and the, the gender is physical as well, then we can prove that with biology. But then it would be meaningless to say No, it's it's just so it's just socially constructed, my dude that the man is a man or the man is a woman. The man would have to be some sort of third category. So now you're not talking about transgenderism, you're talking about something more akin to herm hermaphroditism or intersexuality, which the experts, and again, the last two years, I've grown a little tired of the experts and a little suspect of them, but, but even so, the experts seem to suggest that intersexuality, the physical condition of sexual ambiguity, is a really, really, really rare condition. Much, much- It's, it's one to two percent of the population, Michael. Like, you have as much chance of being born intersex as you do being born a redhead. Come on now. 
terrorism, which is now exploding as a social phenomenon. So I suppose the cognitive scientists could come back and rewrite their thesis on intersexuality and hermaphroditism, sure, and then we could take a look at it then. But, but until then, regardless of what any of these- Also, the fact that he uses hermaphrodit- herm hermaphrodit- hermaphroditism. I, I don't know why I can't say that word. <clears throat> the fact that he uses the term hermaphrodite is uh, pretty funny, too, because it shows how far behind the times he is. Like, that, time, that term has been outdated for, like, the last 25 years. Show. The <laughs> point that they're making remains incoherent, and so I'm, I'm just waiting for one unified thesis, and then I look forward to knocking that one down, too. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ian Zwink. I'm a student at Washburn Law. Uh, you've interviewed Michael Malice, and so I'm curious to hear some of the, your thoughts on the benefits of either national divorce or his idea of anarchy, anarchy where we essentially dissolve the government and privatize everything. I was young once. I was a kid once. I had all sorts of ideas. I love Michael Malice. He's a very sharp guy, and he's extremely funny, so I, I love having him on the show. But we have basically as separate political views, as, as diverse- Oh, so Michael Malice is like an ANCAP dude? political views as two people sort of on the right could possibly have. I just don't buy it. I think national divorce is wrong-headed. First of all, people are forgetting that national divorces are not peaceful. Maybe in some utopian novel by Ayn Rand they are, but in reality they're not. They look like partition in India. They look like civil war throughout Eastern Europe or the Middle East. They look like civil, civil war in the United States for that matter. And so it doesn't happen. You don't, you don't really see in practice peaceful national divorces. So before we speak flippantly about it, I think we need to be at the point where we're ready to shoot our cousins in the face. I myself am not. But moreover, I find it sort of weak. I don't want to give the lib to Southern California. I don't want them to give, I don't want to give them New York for that matter either. I want to take all of it. I don't think they have any right to it. I don't think they have any right to, for instance, in their states, vote for abortion. I don't think they have any right at all. I want to go in and conquer those places, and I want to have my country back. I don't want to give them. I want to get rid of democracy. Michael Knowles, I see, this is why I love his perfectly smooth, marble-like brain. Um, he just will say the, uh, the things he actually believes out loud with his chest. And yeah, he's just an out-and-out, -out, at the very least, fascist. Maybe like a Christian, uh, like a Christ, uh, Christian fascist of some kind. Um, yeah. <laughs> half of my country and some of the best geography. So I think we ought to fight and take it back and wield the political power that the people give us on the happy occasions that they do. And by the way, I don't think we would have to conquer New York or California even for that matter. I think people tend to be a lot more sensible than the ruling class has been in the last 20 or 30 years. So I don't like that. In terms of anarchism, no, I'm a conservative, my friend. I, I reject all sorts of these modern ideologies, anarchism, uh, communism, socialism. Democracy. This ism, that ism. I, I don't like the isms. I'm, I am a man. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be an ist or anything like that. I just want to be a gentleman and have a good country. And so I, I think that uh, it would be much wiser not to fall. Yeah, except your definition of a good country would literally result in the genocide of people like me. So uh, you can go fuck yourself with talk about being a gentleman. I'll into the. You'd be. Michael Knowles would be one of those, like, uh, uh, death camp commanders who like smokes a cigar and like watches his staff play in a pool while like smoke from like the the cremation crematories rise in the background and you'd be like oh i am such a gentleman as thousands of people die every day in his camp traps of the left and think that we can recreate society out of our unfettered reason in a way that's <laughs> never been tried including in ice yeah yeah like that that's what's fascinating about him entrema like what I find refreshing about him is that he says what he believes. What I find fascinating about him is that he has the self-awareness to, like, point out his mental missteps and, like, his irrationality, but he doesn't quite have enough, like, self-perception to realize he's a neo-Nazi. I genuinely don't think that Michael Knowles thinks that he's a fascist. But it's mostly because he doesn't realize that he's a fascist. He, like, he's too dumb to realize it. <clears throat> Iceland. The anarchists always try to say that Iceland was some anarchist utopia in the 9th century or something, and it's total crap, and even if it were true, it hasn't happened in a very long time. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to throw away my cultural patrimony. I just want to have a good society, and I think it would be a lot easier to pull from the best of our traditions and to exercise prudence, which is a virtue, than it would be to remake society anew. Whitaker Chambers, the ex-communist who became a conservative, he made this point uh, in, in Witness. He said that communism is not the newest ideology. It's the second oldest. It goes back to the Garden of Eden when the serpent told Eve, ye shall be as gods. Uh, this idea took hold during the modern era, especially in the Enlightenment, and it was a left-wing idea, and, and then conservatives seem to grab hold of it in some ways, too, on some of the isms that they hold dear. But it's always silly 
our unfettered reason ain't going to do it. We're not that smart. So I, I think we ought to uh, look back toward that great democracy, the democracy of the dead, look back to the wisdom of our fathers and, and help to restore and defend and rebuild the, the civilization that we've been given. Hi, Michael. My name is Jessica McIntarian. I graduated Washburn a few years ago. Um, so recently, in, in the last couple years, we've seen conservatives take more moderate liberals under their wing and say, see, we're not so different. Um, this has come up again in the news recently with Fox News hiring Bruce Jenner, uh, who now calls himself Caitlin. And I was wondering, what are your thoughts on this tendency of conservatives lately? I would never. God, imagine, imagine being so cucked like Caitlin Jenner and deciding to work for conservatives and run as a conservative, even though... 95% of conservatives fucking hate your ability to exist. Criticize Fox News. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would never do that. It certainly raised my eyebrow when I saw that, when I saw that news. And the statement made by the CEO was, was that Caitlin, she is a crusading pioneer in the LGBT plus community. And interesting how, uh, interesting how Michael Knowles will properly gender Caitlyn Jenner but won't properly gender India Moore, who is a trans actress. Interesting. ...to have transgenderism <clears throat> represented on the news or something. Uh, on the one hand, it, it's actually proving right what Fox has said for a long time. Fox has said it's fair and balanced, and, and uh, the left has always mocked that and said, no, Fox is a far-right conservative news channel. No, I, Fox is pretty moderate, actually. <laughs> Fox is hiring, has hired lots and lots of Democrats, and now is... Look, a lot of black people work at Fox News, okay? How could they possibly be racist? Look, they hired a transgender. See how progressive and moderate they are? If they were, they were really conservative, they wouldn't have any blacks on there. This is presenting transgenderism as though that were some sort of normal or, or, or normal ideology and something perhaps even to be embraced. So uh, it, it's not particularly conservative, that's for sure. But it gets to a tendency that a lot of Republicans and conservatives have fallen into, which is we just want to please everybody. Because we're nice. It's actually, I don't even think it's cynical. I'm, I'm really not questioning the motives of, of even a big corporation like Fox, and I'm not, certainly not questioning the motives of conservatives. We want to be nice, and we want to be liked, and we don't want to tell people no, and we want to let them do whatever they want to do. Yeah, that, that's, that's the bedrock of conservatism right there. Yeah, sure. And so there, there, then comes this political advantage that they think is an advantage where they'll say, haha, we're pushing transgenderism now on our airways. See, the Democrats are the real transphobes. You say, no, no, we are. We actually are. I mean, we're not, it's not phobic. We're not irrationally afraid of it. We're going to play that at normal speed. We're going we're gonna to replay that at normal speed. Because I can't believe he just said it. That they think is an advantage where they'll say, Ha ha! We're pushing transgenderism now on our airways. See? The Democrats are the real transphobes. And you say, No, no, we are. We actually are. I mean, we're not, it's not phobic. We're not irrationally afraid of anything or anyone. We just... God, they, they did this with, with gay people, too. They did this, they did this with homophobia. Well, uh, well, uh, I'm not homophobic, because I ain't afraid of none of you queers. I just don't think you deserve the same rights. Look, I'm not homophobic, I just think that gay people should be strung up outside of town until they stop kicking. I'm not homophobic, but if a man looks at me and I think that he's a little bit sexually interested in me, I will fight him to the death. Um, they did the same fucking thing with gay people, and they're doing it again with trans people. And it's just like, well, I'm, I'm not transphobic. How could I possibly be transphobic? I'm not, a, I'm not literally afraid of trans people. So obviously, I can't be transphobic, which isn't like the the phobic thing. I, again, since people since these people love definitions, just real quick, uh, here's the dictionary definition of phobic: having or involving an extreme or irrational fear of or aversion to something. Being incredibly violently, aggressively aversion of averse to like trans people existing in your proximity does make you transphobic, Michael Knowles. That that is definitionally what it means.
Anyway, uh, I love that he just openly says that the Republican Party is the party of transphobia. The Democrats are the real transphobes. You say, no, no, we are. We actually are. I mean, we're not, it's not phobic. We're not irrationally afraid of anything or anyone. We just reject the ideology. And a party that welcomes every single idea doesn't stand for a damn thing at all. And that, that's certainly true of uh, the Republican Party and the establishment on the right. So, so that, that was very disappointing to see that, that uh, turn. And, and sometimes you will hear this. Even beyond the good-hearted efforts, the good-hearted motivations, or the cynical motivations, you'll hear the apathetic response. Oh, who cares? Who cares? What's the big deal? Well, sure, Bruce Jenner is the, one of the greatest athletes <laughs> in recent history, and he's obviously he's a guy in the Wheaties box, and we just know he's a man. But who cares if he's now calling himself Caitlyn and uses the female pronouns? Who cares? The left cares. The left seems to care a whole lot, and they're investing a ton of money and energy and time and focus and resources into getting us all to pretend that a man is secretly a woman and vice versa. Why? Because it matters a whole lot. Because language colors the way that we view the world. If Bruce Jenner is really Caitlyn, then she has every right to go use the ladies' bathroom. She's a she, after all. Her name is Caitlyn, and that's a girl's name. If Bruce Jenner, who I'm told is a very nice guy. I don't know him personally. He was always sort of Republican. If oh, okay, now, now he's misgendering her. Gotcha. Bruce Jenner is not actually Caitlyn. Is not really she. Is a man, and we call him he. That paints a very different picture. And we also, you can be called Caitlyn or Bruce, regardless of your gender. Ka Caitlyn Jenner got her gen got got her gender changed first of all, but legally changed her name. I don't understand. Like, why can't you even respect like the name change? People change their names all the time, Michael. You should know that Michael is one of the most easily changed names in existence. Mike. Mo uh, Moogsy, thank you for the $24 dono, getting it up into round territory. Uh, and remember, chat, type exclamation point charity in chat to donate. We are raising money today for the Trans Empowerment Project. And uh, we need to raise money for trans people because people like Michael Knowles make it ever harder for trans people to exist and make rent and buy food and transport themselves out of dangerous situations. Please, please, please continue donating. Let's, uh, let's get it up there. See, instantly, of course the man has no right to use the woman's bathroom. The left always manipulates language to set the stage for their cultural revolution. That's what political correctness is, that's what wokeness is, that's what cancel culture is. It's all getting to this language issue, the debates over free speech. The, the fact that a public university president was condemning me for speaking at a university and saying men are not women. I mean, that's, that's the kind of focus that we're talking about. And they're doing it because it's given them, they are, they are doing Well, you're not just saying men are not women, you're also saying that trans people should be banned. You know, like that, again, this is like saying white people should be banned from the state of Arkansas. You know, like... Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty bigoted. It'd be pretty bigoted to ban an entire group of people from existing in a space. Doing it because it's given them the whole culture. It's very effective, and I think we need to draw lines too and say no. I'm not because of some misguided desire to be nice. I'm not going to call the man an address. She. It's not good for him. It's certainly not good for us, and it's just not true. And you're not going to make me lie. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Uh, my name is Francisco, and I had a question on, uh, you mentioned how transgenderism is kind of an old heresy, uh, Gnostic dualism, um, and how it was usually found only in the intellectual circles. Uh, I wanted to know what you thought maybe, uh, we're in this new generation, the Zoomers, 20% of them are in this camp. Um, why is that? A, a man who looks very happy with his life. The Zoomers, 20% of them are in this camp. Um, why is that? There was a video that came out the other day of the corporate president of the Walt Disney Company, and she was describing how we need to have lots more LGBT, LMNOP, the list goes on and on, characters as leads in the shows, and she said this was- uh, the Yo, Jenny 12 Gage, thank you for the $10 dono. Trans rights are indeed human rights. Um, I, I also love how they haven't come up with, like, new jokes for any of, like, the homophobic or transphobic stuff that they came up with, like, 40 years ago. LGBT LMNOP ah ha ha this, get it their letters personal issue for her because she has one transgender child and one pan gender or pansexual child which is statistically impossible that can't happen we're talking about an affliction that that absolutely can happen historically uh, concerns what 0.001% of the population also i love how he refer he refers to 
having a gay child and a trans child as an affliction. Go fuck. Like, I I'm sorry. If you're, if you're the parent he's talking about, you know, it wouldn't be legal to assault Michael Knowles. But uh, I wouldn't blame you if you uh, pulled a Will Smith, if you know what I'm saying. It has existed for two seconds. I mean, it doesn't really exist, but even as a concept, it's existed for about two seconds. It's not... Yeah. The idea that... Yo, Joanna! Thank you for donating $50! Uh, that is extremely generous. Such a great cause. I'm glad I'm able to support. Absolutely. And after we finish this video, I'll go into more detail about what all these donos go to. Um, but, like, the idea that, like, never in human history until, like, ten years ago, there wasn't a person who was just attracted to both men and women, or any gender of person. Like, the idea that people like that wouldn't have existed in the past is really, really fucking silly and stupid. Possible that that is the case. What has really happened is a social phenomenon has spread in extraordinarily elite circles in particular, such as the circles in which a corporate president of Disney might run. And I don't have a statistic on this, but I told you I don't really believe in statistics. In my experience... I don't really, I don't really have any evidence on this. But I don't believe in evidence anyway, so I'm just going to continue talking about what I personally think uh, because I'm a bigot and facts don't actually care about my feelings and I don't like facts as a result. Transgenderism, sexual confusion is far, far more pronounced among the wealthy, among the influential, among the coastal circles than it is in the... Yes, which is why... M Th this is so true. Transgenderism is so prominent among the ultra-wealthy. Which is why most trans people struggle with poverty. <laughs> it, it's so prominent among the ultra elites, which is why half of trans people who are black go homeless, and why queer trans people of color have like a uh, four times higher rate of unemployment. Um, yeah, Avalon uh, of Babylon. Uh, it's news to me that all of us uh, trans people are high rollers out there. Um, yeah, uh, turn, turns out uh, Jews don't rule the world. It's the evil and nefarious trans elites who are just so wealthy. Middle, ordinary, blue-collar parts of the country. Uh, only an intellectual could be so stupid. I mean, this, this does get right back to the gospel, since you mentioned the Gnostic heresy. In the gospels, how many times are the geniuses, the intellectuals? Ah, uh, yes. Theology is only the study of uh, mainstream Christianity and not the study of all religions. The professors. How many times are these types of characters mocked and derided? We are told that to, to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to be like a child. Not childish, but childlike. You have to... It, it reminds me of the, the IQ bell curve meme. Have you seen this? This is one of my favorite memes. Where it's the IQ bell curve, and down at the bottom with the big drooling idiot, he says, the men, men are not women, or something to that effect. And then you get to the genius, who has, I don't know, an IQ of 100... God, imagine, imagine, uh, trying to make an appeal to the fucking bell curve. Earth Rhombus, thank you for the $25 dono. I really appreciate that. Yeah, look, uh, Michael Knowles is also racist, by the way. Just in case, just in case you weren't, uh, you weren't aware. Uh, aren't bell curves statistics, though? That's true. He also doesn't believe in statistics unless they're telling him he's smarter than black people. And he says, no, actually, no, men can be women because sex and gender is different and because this sociologist told me so when I was a sophomore at Princeton and uh, therefore whatever. And then you get up to the true genius mathematician monk Jedi and he says, no, actually, men are not women, actually. That's just the way it is. The stupid guy was right. And I, I think that's, that's what we're seeing now. The, the Disney leaks that, that Christopher Rufo put out the other day drew it home for me. 60% of Americans support the parental rights and education bill in Florida. 100% of the elites in this country. Damn. If only you believed in statistics and that meant anything, Michael Knowles. How is that, Bill? At the corporate level, at the governmental level, at the media level, at the technology level. Why the disparity? Uh, it's happened throughout history. It happens again and again and again. And uh, it's incumbent upon us, we the people who still ostensibly have the right to rule ourselves, to tamp down those... Quasi-spec? That sounds like a job for chat to do in our Discord. That's, uh, that, that sounds like a job for you guys to do and then for me to react to. 
to experts. If the last two years haven't shown you that the experts are completely incompetent and usually corrupt idiots, I, d I don't know how to help you. I, you know, you've seen it. You've seen it with your own eyes. It's Fuck yeah! Don't believe. Don't believe smart people, chat. Smart people are cucks. Just believe your own preconceptions. You know everything you need to know. Just, just logic it out. Just logic it out, chat. Just think about it for a bit. You can figure out quantum physics if you really applied yourself. You don't need a fancy schmancy expert. Abyssal Liss. Thank you for the $50 dono. Trans rights. Take my money. I donate all my... And it's not big enough, but I will read the rest of the message. All of my paycheck if I could. Thank you so much, Abyssal Liss. And don't worry. Hopefully other people will also donate a quarter of their paychecks to this wonderful cause. Uh, also, we have officially done the uh, achieved the politics slowdown, which uh, we will apply to a Ben Shapiro video. So it seems to me the logical next step is we, the people, the people of the United States, who are so dumb that we know that men are not women, we need to exercise that power and rein in our elites who have become out of control. Yeah. I'm Jada. I go here. So one thing that I've heard of that I, I've not heard any conservative or liberal people saying is that while there's a increase in like transgender women to men that's going on, there's also an increase in women being- Oh, Joanna, thank you very much for the gifted sub to central scrutinizer. Diagnosed with autism in their teens and twenties. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard anything about that or about any studies that might relate having gender dysphoria with autism. And maybe if it's a symptom of that, nobody's talking about. I, I have. I was. Oh, reading God. one of these today, actually, oh, that uh, a young gal, I forget her name, uh, was uncomfortable in her body, as all, as all teenagers are. It happened to you as well. Well, could you tell, before I tell you about some article I read on the internet, what happened? I was told to keep it brief, but I guess I will tell no, my story. Yeah, yeah. I keep <laughs> so, it long, keep it lengthy. I want, I want to hear the story. <laughs> as a kid, I, I didn't, I, I liked both girl and boy things as a kid, which that's what a lot of people go through. And then as soon as I hit puberty, it's like, I could not deal with the changes in my body. And I didn't really have a word for it yet as transgenderism, but like, I would bind my chest in secret. Mm -hmm. I would make my clothes to wear, like it would hide my hips. And you know, I had my church and my family who was like, they reaffirmed me that I was a girl, which I'm very thankful for because at that point I definitely wanted to go on hormones as soon as I could. And if I was still it with the influence of the left and the LGBT, like I would have gone on hormones and I would have detransitioned because it was a symptom of my autism that I got diagnosed with at 20 and it wasn't like actual gender dysphoria. I've heard a number of stories. I told you I was reading one of these today. Uh, Abigail Schreier has written a book about it called uh, Abigail Schreier. Yes. Uh, noted, noted transphobe Abigail Schreier, who is, I need to no note, a lawyer and not a biologist or a psychologist, uh, whose entire thesis is that trans, trans men are spreading like a social virus. Uh, because we're treating tomboys as trans men now, uh, which is not backed up by any of the medical science or literature. There is one study out there that references uh, the idea of like uh, socially uh, spread transness, and it is entirely sourced from transphobes on transphobic forums. Uh, who talk about their children like their goddamn, um, god goddamn uh, blights on humanity. Um, also, uh, Van Gogh Vroom, you have an amazing username. Thank you for the follow. Uh, also, there is some level of correlation between autism and, like, transness. Uh, it is relatively understudied from what I understand, but uh, the general conclusion is that mostly it's because uh, there is a part of autism that like makes autistic folks uh, basically look at like social constructions like gender uh, and go like, well, that's very arbitrary and stupid and I'm going to do what I want, um, which, yeah, I, that makes sense to me. damage about the regret about these same sorts of issues that you're talking about which is good and the media completely shut it out you are not allowed to tell that story the young woman i spoke to just the other day helena kirshner she is not allowed to tell her story about coming to realize no i'm not i'm not actually a man and realize this isn't working and you were so fortunate you were so fortunate that your family and your community were saying 
you, you were so fortunate that your family community were sane and did not indulge this delusion. And the scariest part, the scariest part, is that a lot of the families who will indulge th this kind of transgender mania that could be caused by any other number of conditions, notably autism, though, you're right, that is cropping up quite a lot. A lot of these families just want to do what's best for their kid. And they're being told by these sickos on television and in the universities and in the political apparatus that the only way to treat your kid is to lop off their genitals and inject them with cross-sex hormones. Absolute irreversible damage that would have caused, frankly, and as you're describing in your case, greater regret than, than you were, and, and stress and anxiety than you were experiencing even in the moment. Damn. If only the procedure he's talking about didn't have like a 99% uh, success rate. But also, he doesn't believe in statistics. So I guess he just thinks everything that might possibly have a bad outcome does have a bad outcome. That's inc incredibly, I'm so glad that you were able to come through that and have a, a real medical diagnosis in the end that did not result in you mutilating yourself. It's amazing. Shout out to my mom and my Catholic church. <laughs> I'm sorry, say one more time. Shout out to my mom and my Catholic church. Yeah, good job. Good <laughs> I feel really sorry for that person. Like, really sorry. You know, like... I... I don't know, the idea... <sighs> yeah, good job for conversion therapy is really f the, the, the name of the game here. Again, Michael Knowles would very much be in favor of conversion therapy, like conversion shock therapy. Just shock the trans kids and trans adults until they're no until they're willing to never be trans again you know what did they just say i missed it uh basically it's me and natalie marie that that person was talking about how uh growing up they hit puberty and they started chest binding and wanted to go on hormones but their parents and their church talked them out of it and then got diagnosed with autism at age 20 and basically was told that their gender dysphoria wasn't real it was just a symptom of their autism and so it like being trans isn't real that that that's like that person's position which is did they convert her out of autism too so infuriating well you'll find that this is actually a relatively common uh form of a uh, conservative propaganda fiddle and Nero uh, that we're actually going to get to in a little bit. So fasten your seatbelts for that. <sighs> oh God, I clicked the wrong button. Good job, mom. Good job, church. And really great stuff. Thank you. Thank you for telling that story. Wow. Wow. Hi, Michael. I'm Deanne. Um, question for you. I know you probably haven't noticed coming into Kansas City that we have a lot of crazy stuff coming, occurring in our country and in especially Kansas. So I was wondering, other than the mailbag, is there an email um, contact that we can send like newsworthy articles or tips to? Please do. There is a Daily Wire tip line. I, you know, I'm, because I'm not a reporter, I don't deal usually with the tip lines. But uh, I have a personal website where you can go and submit things. My uh, I won't call them fans on the left. Occasionally, will send love letters to me through that. It's always a pleasure. Uh, but, but I'm always interested in hearing these stories because in the olden days, of, uh, even just a few years ago, when you're putting a show together of commentary, you read the news, and that's how you're supposed to find the news. Today, the most important news, most interesting news that's going on is the stuff that's not being reported. It's the stuff that's being kept out of the papers and the websites and TV shows. So I'm always happy to hear that. And I think the most important stories that we're getting, I'll give an example. Luke Rosiak at Daily Wire broke a story about a, a rape that occurred because of transgender policies in a restroom in Loudoun County. And oh, God. They're still pushing this fucking story, dude. They didn't have transgender policies in Lottom County. The look, so to give you guys, to give you guys an overview of this story, okay? Conservatives have been pushing the idea that uh, a young man was allowed into the women's restroom and he raped a girl and that it was a result of transgender policies. The claim that this boy was transgender came because he liked to wear skirts, so obviously that means he was transgender, except that he just liked to wear skirts. And also, the part conveniently left out of the story was that there were no transgender policies in effect at this school or in the entire school district at the time. They were, pay they were passed after the sexual assault had happened. Also, the sexual assault happened between this boy and a girl that he had been dating, and they had been sexually active with each other before, and 
she had in she had deliberately chosen the that bathroom for their meetup and just didn't want to have sex that time and he wound up sexually assaulting her anyway because he wanted to get his rocks off um which is obviously bad and illegal and he should have been arrested and he was arrested but because of policies put in place by the trump administration by uh betsy devos's education administration um because it was a rape allegation and he was under age he was released from from the jail and put into another school because that is the policy again passed under the, the trump administration where he then wound up sexually assaulting another girl not in a bathroom um and again none of this occurred because of transgender policies it happened at least the second time literally because of trump era policies it's absolutely fucking insane and honestly arguing it because trans is dismissing actual assault exactly it's it's just fucking uh, th this this story makes me upset they keep bringing it up that was then covered up by the administrators the student was sent to another school happened again that story which no one by the way, the it was covered up by administrators didn't happen. Basically, the father the father was called to this or the the father was told what had happened uh, by the daughter uh, went to the went to the school administrators. They suggested that they handle it in house. He got really mad, demanded that they call the police, and then the police were called and the kid was arrested. So like the cover up wasn't that they like secretly sent this kid to another school they're legally required to do that uh the cover up literally consisted of well let's let's handle this in house and not get the police involved which i'm glad the police were involved they should get involved in sexual assault cases and it has nothing to do with trans people who's going to cover daily wire broke it that story may have change the gubernatorial election in Virginia. It's a very important story. It's important to the safety of students. It's important to the political direction of the state and of the country, the commonwealth of the country. So yeah, please send in those tips. You can find it on my, my personal website. Thanks. It's time for our final question of the evening. Final question. It's terrible. Okay. Hi, Michael. My name is Alex. Um, I'm a local mom here in the area. And so, you know, being as how I have children, I, I worry about the state of, I mean, I homeschool, but I see what's going on because I love my children. Um, <laughs> but, just kidding. Um, but... I homeschool be because I love my ki children. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. The this woman shouldn't be allowed to have kids. <laughs> I, like I I don't know. I'm getting I'm getting bad vibes like this woman waterboards her kids when they misbehave. <laughs> They're not kidding. They're not kidding at all. Um, but I see what's going on in the school systems, you know, and I don't understand. I know that these people know, a lot of them, they know that men are men and women are women. And I don't understand the motivation or the agenda. Why are they trying to push it on to young children? What is the motivation there that they're trying? What are they trying to accomplish with this? The motivation is to create a generation of revolutionaries. That's the motivation. I actually don't think that their motivation is uh, some kind of pedophilic interest in kids. Hopefully not, at least for most of them. I think the interest is that it, sex is one of the most powerful forces in human nature. And if you can control it, then you can much more easily mold people. And that's especially true when our brains are nice and squishy in the earliest. What? I look, I would under I I even though it's completely insane, I at least follow the logic of like, well, they're trying to groom kids to to fuck them. Obviously that's bullshit, but I understand the thought process. But like his idea that they are that that there is a concerted movement by the elites to mold children into transes to create a political body a political force in america because if you if you control sex you can 
What is sex like spice to Michael Knowles? Like control the spice, you control the galaxy. Like what? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? of our education. And education is not just reading, writing, and arithmetic, it's ethics, it's how we view the world, it's how we understand the nature between body and soul and everything else. So that, that's one part of it. The other part of it is this attempt to redefine reality. Going back to the Garden of Eden when the serpent tells Eve, ye shall be as gods. So it's a line, by the way. I'm not just pulling that out of thin air. Uh, John Kennedy, in a speech in 1963, I believe it was, quoted George Bernard Shaw, the socialist playwright. And he said, uh, Shaw pointed out, some people see things that are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. And he, he uttered this line as though it were supposed to be inspiring. And a lot of Democrat politicians have used it since. What he doesn't point out is that that line comes from a play by George Bernard Shaw, a play cycle called Back to Methuselah. It's in the character of the serpent tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden. As Satan very famously said, this inspiring line from Beelzebub, the devil himself, I... And so he, he uses this line, but that really is the agenda, right? It's to re remake society. We, the past is always terrible, according to the progressives. The past was awful. We never want to go back there. And the, and the present's always a crisis. And the future is going to be really, really great. Just give us more power. Just give us more of your rights and, and abolish more of your customs. That's what they tell you. It never quite works out that way. But that has been the project. And so... The projection here is insane. Changing society in terms of its tax rates. Okay. Changing the healthcare system. It's a pretty big deal, but, you know, whatever. Changing the way our energy sector works, as the environmentalists are trying to do with the Green New Deal, for instance. Sure, that's a big deal. But if you can redefine human nature, if you can actually get everyone to believe, or if not believe, at least say that a man is a woman and a woman is a man, you can redefine anything. And, and I think that's what's really at the heart of this transgender obsession. The libs accuse us of being obsessed with sex. We were just minding our own business, having kids and being normal people with our families. It's the libs who, who are the aggressors in the sexual revolution. It's the libs who decided that men are not women. We are under attack, and that is why we must ban the transgenders, get them out of society, get, get them out by the cheapest means possible. A bullet. And if, by the way, if you think I'm being hyperbolic there, I am being, like, slightly hyperbolic, but, uh, keep in mind, uh, that people like this exist. Ex-GOP government candidate, or governor candidate, calls for firing squad for trans rights supporters and political foes. So this guy went on Twitter just a couple days ago. Some of y'all still want to try and find political compromise with those who want to groom our school-aged children and pretend men are women, etc. I think they all need to be lined up against the wall before a firing squad to be sent to an early judgment. God will judgment, uh, judge them, just think they need to be sent to an early judgment. He kept tweeting, though. I'm, I'm trying to find his other tweets. Oh, it's from an account that no longer exists. Damn. What a surprise. Yeah, he went, he went further, calling himself a southern gentleman uh, who just thinks that trans people and uh, trans rights advocates deserve to be uh, shot because it's a clean and simple way of getting rid of the problem. Men, and men can become women and vice versa. It's the libs who are trying to trans the kids in freaking kindergarten, for goodness sakes. Don't call me the aggressor. They are the ones doing it. They are obsessed with it. And they're obsessed with it because politically it's extraordinarily powerful. And it's why every single conservative... Again, citation needed. Who is trying to... Who is actively trying to turn kids trans? That's the question. Because no... There's a big difference between trying to make kids gay or trans and letting kids know that it is okay to be gay or trans, and if they are, they will still be loved and supported. There's a big difference between those two things. Sometimes we're asked, is this the hill you want to die on? Yes, if you don't die on a hill, if you're not willing to at least stand up to die on a hill, you're going to run out of hills. There's not going to be a battle anymore. Stand up. This is the issue. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone. It's really been a pleasure to be with you tonight. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you the next time I'm in Topeka, Kansas. Thank you. That's, that, that's right, we need to stand up and we need to kill them transgenders. <laughs> oh boy. Alright. Uh, anyway, uh, you definitely should take uh, career advice from this guy. You should definitely take civil what rights advice. What the fuck, from Nicole? Him. It's not what you think. Not what I th Are you fucking your brother? No! What? Oh, I like it when you're rough with me, pretty lady, hmm? <laughs> you asshole! Guys, quit it! This is some serious shit! You're fucking right, it's serious shit! 
think you broke my nose. I'm gonna do fucking worse than that. What are you gonna say? I hit you because you have an incest with your sister. I'm adopted, remember? That makes it better. <laughs> Guys, shut the fuck <laughs> up. We're almost <laughs> there. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> God, this is so gay. This is just too surreal for me. You know, I think we need to get this on the soundboard. We need, we need to get this specific clip from on the soundboard. Wait. This is just too surreal for me. <laughs> Immediately followed by the scream. Give me the give me the timestamp. It's like 50 seconds in. Here, here's the video. I shouldn't beat the shit out of him, huh? I'll give you two! I love you, and I'm pregnant! Fuck! <laughs> Fuck. Maybe if you stopped whacking off to Lara Croft and left the house once in a while, you might find some adventure and uh, get a real woman. Maybe if you stopped whacking off to Lara Croft every once in a while, left the house, you would get some adventure. <laughs> Honestly, though, I wish he had stayed as an actor, not because I think he's a good actor, but the world would be a slightly better place with like him being like a struggling barista actor and not being whatever fuck the fuck he is now, you know? Also, just, <laughs> just so fucking bad. I I want to see him in a string of B movies. I do. I do want to see that. I feel like he belongs in like best of the worst pantheon. Holy shit! Let's start a little bit. You get out of here, please. You can. I haven't really found my thing. You're in. Baritenor. I damn near killed him. <laughs> Who is she? It's like a stock joke. Really? Unironically, this is how I imagine Michael Knowles at like in like real life parties. You're in. Baritenor. I damn near killed him. <laughs> Who is she? It's like a stock joke. Oh, that does not mean anything. Okay. Sometimes I wish the elderly would just die. Oh. So you want to go out after we wrap this up? Maybe have some sex. Ew, what's wrong? Don't strong? make me show up. Listen, man, there's no need for that. Should make it up to you. Give me the slide, baby. Is that a threat? That's a promise, sucker. No Jimmy. And so when he called me, he didn't even tell me what it was about. And I said, yeah, I'm absolutely in. And he said, okay, it's a, a Chinese hopping vampire movie. And I thought he was joking. I didn't think that was a genre of film. But, uh, but it is, and it's really good. And yeah, I'm just thrilled that, uh, that I could be a part of it. You're perfect. Your clothes are perfect. Don't tell me you speak with a Latino accent, because that would be really weird. You're talking to me, ma? My partner, My partner would never sneeze on me. What should take, take me for, me man? For I'm Bosco. No. I'm going to be Bosco. No, that's me. And your accent sounds really fake. Don't be mad at me, I'm just the player. Looks like you're wearing a costume. I'm more Hispanic than you, and I'm not even Hispanic. My name is Bosco, you call me Bosco. Steve Fernandez. Alex Haynes, as I live and breathe. Cody, so what nice to see a you. coincidence. Oh my, I, I can't believe you're here. I tell you, Manhattan may be big, but it's still an island. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, a, you're an actor. You're, you're acting, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I am acting. Wow. I am. I'm so jealous. I I wish I could do that. You know, not care about money or success. Juggling offers, you know. Mm. We're gonna sit on my yeah, own stuff. Yeah, playing hard to get. That's what you gotta do, huh? You yeah. Gotta... <laughs> it's been tough. Whoa. I'm sorry. This girl is about to make the biggest mistake of her life. What? Yeah, she's gonna leave the bar without meeting me. <laughs> 
Yeah, let's get coffee though, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, Facebook me, bro. Hey, let me buy you something! <laughs> I just yeah I, I don't know like I feel like Michael Knowles is like always like a one or two bad days away from snapping and like going full on American Psycho 